a topic that's more of a curiosity than something that is uh, important iconographically or uh, or commonly uh, found is really um, the the idea of boots and and which deities wear boots, uh, who wears boots, who doesn't wear boots. Uh, then this also plays in a little bit to shoes and sandals. So just basically, sandals is an Indian concept. Boots are a northern concept. So we're talking about the Himalayas, Tibet, and China, Central Asia. Now, when it comes to art, we do have paintings and we have sculpture. We only have one example at this time, so far, of a Buddha wearing boots. And that's in a, a Vairochana Buddha in a seated posture with the legs uh, crossed in the Vajrasana. And he's wearing boots, but he's also wearing the attire of um, Tibetan nobility or a king or a Central Asian king. So the boots are very much a part of that kind of, uh, of garb. Now, secondly, we have the, the Stavira, the Arhats, the, uh, the Buddhist elders. Now, the Buddhist elders we've already talked about in the past, and they're really based on... Uh, Chinese models from the uh, 10th century. Uh, so they have, uh, they can have boots in the Chinese model, but if you are looking at sculpture or paintings of the elders and they're done more in an Indian model, then they will not have boots. They might have sandals or else they'll have bare feet. Um, Tibetan kings, we find Tibetan kings in painting and sculpture. They have boots. They have Tibetan felt boots, uh, possibly leather sides, but a lot of felt usually. Um, so we we have those. Now Padmasambhava is based on uh, uh, the, the king appearance model. So for kings, what we really have is we have the four guardian kings of the directions or four direction kings that accompany the, the 16 elders. Then we have a variety of Tibetan kings, Songsen Gampo, Ralpachen, uh, Tri Sung Detsun. Then we have uh, Padmasambhava. And then we have any other kings that we might come across. Then we have uh, worldly protector deities, not Buddhist protector deities that are indigenous to India or come out of Sanskrit texts. We have uh, uh, Buddhist worldly protectors that come out of Himalayan and Tibetan mythology, um, converted from Bun deities, possibly Bun religious deities, or they're simply converted from mountain deities or 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 any kind of uh, local indigenous uh, spirit or mountain god. They wear boots. Uh, an exception to that is Bekse Chen, because we, we like to say that Bekse Chen really does come out of India, but it is a bit of a sketchy early history with Bekse Chen. He wears boots, so we can consider him a bit of an exception. Now, the other class of deities that wear boots are really the Drala, the warrior appearance deities of Tibet. Um, and, and fitting within the Drala appearance, we also have uh, King Gesar in some of his uh, uh, appearances, not in all, because Gesar can have a number of different ways that he is depicted, peaceful, semi-peaceful, wrathful, and uh, wrathful. Uh, but uh, all of the, the warrior uh, deities uh, and protectors also have boots. Now, there are other uh, aspects to this topic, such as uh, boot or foot outlines on paintings, uh, how the single boot, the sole of the boot, is highlighted on some protector deity paintings. We also have a hat within the Kagyu tradition, uh, which is called a boot boot-shaped hat. Uh, so this is just uh, beginning to cover the very obscure topic of, uh, of who wears boots and who doesn't. So press the like button. You can share. You can also comment. And you can support the work we do by becoming a member of uh, HAR on Patreon.